Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Sam, that's my solar powered car, the Sun Eater, and this is a YouTube channel where we look at how to use batteries and solar to add range and utility onto vehicles. Today's video is gonna be about custom solar panels. And some of you who have been watching the channel for a while may be thinking, wait a minute, I thought you already did an episode on that. And I did, several months back. You may recognize this. For those of you that missed the episode, I'll do a real quick recap here. What I was doing here was putting strings of solar cells onto an auto body section and looking for different laminating or encapsulating methods um, that would protect cells from the elements and at the same time give kind of a, a smooth, somewhat aesthetic zero profile to the car. The problem with solar panels is they're pretty much all squares and rectangles and uh, Cybertruck notwithstanding, vehicles are not made out of squares and rectangles. The various panelings of the car, the hood, the doors, um, have kind of weird shapes. And when we put solar panels on the car, we do our best to find something that'll kind of fit that space, but we usually use leave a lot of area unutilized. So what I was attempting to do here is if I can make my own solar panels that are attached directly to the vehicle, uh, I'm able to fill in spaces as small as four square inches there um, by putting these solar cells pretty much anywhere I want to on the car. It was a good idea in theory, but in practice what I ran into is that when you're painting the silicone laminate, the silicone capsule onto the car body part, it tends to flow and spread and get everywhere and make a mess. I think you might be able to maybe 3D print some thin little plastic borders that would kind of keep that liquid from flowing all over the place but you've got to get it right on the first shot and if you mess up you're gonna get this kind of spilling all over the exterior of the vehicle I still maintain that if you really put a lot of thought into it and did it with a lot of care you could still build solar panels that went directly onto the skin of the vehicle but in practice I know it would be a very tedious probably frustrating experiment so what else can we do if you look at the 50 watt solar panel on the hood here, we can see that the area that's covered by solar cells, the area that's actually making us power, is actually equal to the amount of area that's just kind of sitting there that we're wasting that's not used. What I need is a panel that can utilize some more of that space. So after I did that episode on trying to manufacture my own custom solar panels, one of my viewers recommended to me a company called Linson. Now what Linson does is you give them the dimensions and the voltage of the solar panel you want and they will manufacture it for you and ship it to you. Here's the one they made for me. As you can see, it'll cover up a lot more of the area of this hood and give us a lot more power production off of this body panel. How much more? Here's the specs on the back of the panel. Um, they, I had them build it up to 20 volts because that's roughly the same voltage that all the other solar panels on the vehicle are putting out, and it's 65 watts. That's a 30% improvement over in power production over the 50 watt panel that's on the hood now. And actually, if I'd put a little more care into it, I think we could have had them build a few more cells there and there I probably could have built this up to a 75 watt panel if I really really fine-tune the dimensions and get these solar cells to cover this last little bit of available area over here but I am happy with a 30 percent improvement in power production from the hood I like that the construction quality of it looks really good it's got that um, special coating that they put on top of solar panels that takes light that hits them at an angle and kind of diffracts it directly down into the cells. It looks solid and I'm pretty excited to get it attached to the vehicle. I hooked the watt meter up to it and ran a few tests to see how it was producing, if it was producing up to specs. And I clocked it at about 41 watts in the fall with the sunlight coming in at kind of a suboptimal angle. So if it's doing 41 under those conditions, I'm pretty sure it'll be doing 50, maybe 55 watts in the summer. We won't know for another five or six months, but the same way that I did a, a product review for the aero wheels for the Nissan Leaf, I'll put a pinned comment at the top of this video 
that I update every three or four months so we can see how this thing produces and how well it ages in the elements. Okay, so now let's talk about the price. That solar panel is one of one. There's not another one like it in the world. And so you know that means it wasn't cheap. The price that Linson quoted me to build that panel was $269. That's about $4.13 a watt, which is more than twice what I paid for the Renogy panels on the roof rack there. So was it worth it? Well, if you've never relied on off-grid power, especially off-grid power for your vehicle, then you probably won't understand how that could ever be worth it. But if you're a van lifer uh, who has a solar setup for their van and Linson could build some custom panels for them that can fill in the areas that the traditional panels can't fill in, and that allows them to run their mini fridge a little cooler or run their AC a little longer in the summer, then it could absolutely be worth a couple hundred bucks. Uh, if you have a solar electric vehicle like me and that extra 30% of power that we can get from the hood, you know, or from other spots of the vehicle can add a mile or two a day, that's going to increase our range, which is going to decrease our range anxiety. And that could really be worth it for us. I wasn't the only one who thought that the benefits of having this increased power or output um, outweighed the expenses of it. YouTuber Ian George had Linson make some custom solar panels for his Honda Insight that he has a solar setup for. I was actually really impressed with the job that he did, um, getting them the dimensions and the job that he did getting them back to him. He set these things up to where they're gonna perfectly optimize the space available on that hood. He even had them cut out little holes in the panels where the little uh, jets protrude out of the hood that spray the wiper fluid up on so that he can rest those things flush down on the hood and still have the uh, the windshield wiper jets kind of function through the little hole in the solar panels. I thought it was pretty cool. He's going to do an experiment where he tries to marry these solar panels with some kind of material that will allow a little bit of airflow underneath the panels, um, which will help keep them cooler and make them even more efficient. He does some pretty cool experiments on his YouTube channel. I'll include a link in the video description here. So that's all I have to tell you about uh, custom flexible solar panels from Linson. Hopefully this video finds its way to somebody whose life can be made a little easier uh, through this product. I wanted to share one other quick hack that I stole from another YouTuber on a real quick and cheap way to add a little bit of efficiency to your Nissan Leaf. The first generation Nissan Leaf, uh, this one right here and that one over there, didn't have a gauge on them that told you the tire pressure. Now the tire pressure, if it's at a suboptimal level, can actually steal a few points of efficiency from your vehicle. So I found this little uh, tire pressure sensor right here um, on Amazon for about 30 bucks. I'll include a link in the video description. It talks to these little sensors right here that you put on your valve stems. I cut a little hole in the, in Paul Kennett's little aero wheel inserts here, and it fits real nice right there. And it helps me keep an eye on the tire pressure and make sure it's always at that optimal 45 PSI for these tires. That's gonna help me squeeze every little bit of efficiency that I can out of my leaf. The device that sits on the dash is solar paneled, which I thought kind of was on brand. Um, it's real quick and easy to install and it's not real expensive. So if you are looking to add just a few points of efficiency onto your leaf, it might be something worth you looking into. Also, we are still accepting donations for our second solar leaf build. That car over there, after I do the battery swap, so I can get a good battery in the Sun Eater and keep driving that for a couple more years, we are going to kind of do a refurb with that vehicle over there, um, put some solar panels on it, hopefully build a power wall and a trailer, um, maybe put a 62 kilowatt hour battery in it that's gonna boost its range up to like 200, 250 miles. Um, we are still accepting donations for that. And once we finish that build, the vehicle will be given away to one lucky donor to the channel as a thank you for helping me finance these experiments. You can check out the ticket sales on my Patreon page, and I'll include a link in the video description of this video to how you can donate to that if that's a build you want to watch happen. Okay, that's all I got for today. Let's close it out with an economy via the week.
This week's Economy V comes to us from Garden Grove, California, where we have found a screaming good deal on a 2017 Chevy Bolt. $11,995. That's considerably less than I paid for my wife's Bolt, I'm a little embarrassed to say. It's got 80,000 miles on it, but I wouldn't worry about longevity. The electric motors and EVs last considerably longer than gasoline engines, and I think you can reasonably expect to get another probably 200,000 miles out of this car. Between savings on gas and on having to do oil changes and belt replacements, you could save a lot of money and hassle by switching to electric at this price. This Bolt shows a range of 107 miles at 50% charge, so that's a little over 200 with a full charge, and you can probably stretch that to 230 or 240 by driving a little slower. This is about the best deal that I've ever seen on a Bolt. I called the dealership to make sure that they still have it and it hadn't flown off the shelf at that price. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you guys for tuning in and for all the support, and I'll see you guys next week.